And that's what I did there and then. Not only did I not come back a cowboy, I came back a vegetarian. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'd say that was two and a half years ago. That is a decision that has made my life absolutely shitter. <laughs> every day, every meal now. Even ones that didn't used to have meat on, like cornflakes. I just think, oh, this would be lovely with a bit of veal on it, this one. <laughs> It's not so much missing the meat, it's what you're forced to eat instead of meat. It's just, it's good for if you are trying to keep your weight down but you don't want to exercise, because you end up skipping a lot of meals because they're pointless. <laughs> Do you want the, uh, nah, I'll see you at dinner time, we'll try again. <laughs> tofu, what is tofu? Disgusting, yes. Don't know what's inside it. The worst one I have to eat is halloumi now. Yeah. What I really like is a cheese that doesn't melt when it's hot and squeaks when you eat it. <laughs> halloumi? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Nancy. How are you getting on with that lamb? Oh, it's melting in the mouth, is it? That's interesting, because the cheese seems to have an intruder alarm fitted to it. <laughs> I still eat prawns, I'll, I'll be honest, I still eat prawns, because what else am I going to have in a curry? Carrot? I'd rather kill myself, thank you very much. <laughs> Honestly, if you phone an Indian takeaway and say, can I have the vegetarian, they just stop listening. You might as well be saying, I don't really like flavour or texture. <laughs> you pop a cauliflower on now and I'll pick it up in a week. <laughs> and I still have a prawn jow phrase if I go out for a curry, and every now and again I eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to... Like, twice a year, but by accident, I get pissed. And instead of going to a taxi rank, I go to McDonald's. And instead of saying, can you take me home, please, I say, can you give me a Big Mac? I'll pay you double if you feed me it, and then I don't have to touch it. <laughs> really is. That deprived and abused piece of beef is the best thing that goes in my mouth all year. It really is. It's so good that I have to hate myself solidly for three days afterwards just to even it out. I've been on stag do's where men I know to be married have slept with prostitutes, and on the plane back, they've been consoling me because I had a fucking Big Mac. <laughs> it's how much I will commit to self-hatred after a burger. <laughs> well, the important thing is, John, I think we've all made mistakes, but you have to move forward in your life. You, know, you can't let it ruin the rest of your life. I think we're coming into land, mate. I'm just going to have to go and wash my penis. OK. <laughs> But more often than not, as I say, it ends in an argument. She goes to bed, I feel awful. I go in the kitchen and get a whiskey, and I see the dishwasher's finished. And I think, right, well, I'll unload the dishwasher, cos she made tea and loaded the dishwasher. On that occasion, not every night, I'm not an arsehole. That's how we operate. We used to do what I'm sure a lot of you do if you cohabit. One would cook, the other one would wash up. We knock that on the head quite early doors, uh, cos I tend to tidy up as a go while I'm cooking, and she doesn't. <laughs> That's not a problem, is it? That's just two people who do things differently. She does it her way, and I do it right. <laughs> I can't help myself. I run a little dish of soapy water at the beginning, and I'll pop the, the, the chopping knife, just do that at the time. I just pop it in soak. If you don't want to wash it, that's fine. Pop it in soak. Pop a bit of water in there. You've got the beans out, pop a bit of water in there. Bit of water in there. Let's not, let's not put it straight back on the ring there. Let's not put it straight back on the ring with that little teaspoon of bean juice still in it and the residual heat of the ring there, just... <laughs> Just burning that on like a glaze in a kiln. <laughs> you keep scrubbing it, don't come off, does it? It's just an orange pan now. Everything's orange. Sometimes I go in the kitchen, I think I'm getting cataracts. <laughs> Residual bean juice everywhere. Just pop it in. So, same with your baking trays. Tip your roasties out, little bit of water in there, back in the oven, shut the door. The residual heat of the oven, it boils that water, it lifts all the grease off. You tip that away, you've washed the thing already, and you can write that down, cos that's fucking gold, that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You're very kind, but I wish that hadn't been the biggest reception of the evening, I really do. <laughs> Sometimes I think, maybe I'm one of them political comedians, and then I see that and I think, maybe I'm Prue Leith on tour. <laughs> It's a lovely tip, that, and that works for cottage pie, lasagna, or anything. It just slides straight off. Washing up becomes sexual. I do it naked when she's gone to bed, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> just get it right off there with the finger, it slides right off. But, you know, you just pop it in soak. But what that would mean is I'd do a Sunday roast sometimes. She'd go in to wash up, there's only a spoon and a plate. The next day she makes me a sandwich. <laughs> Can bombs gone off in there. She's used everything we own. Sometimes... Sometimes I can't even get in the kitchen door. I have to go in the garden and climb in the window like that. <laughs> Stand on the worktop shouting through, how have you used a tagine? <laughs> I 
So now the rule is you do everything, you get the next night off. That's fairest, right? But what it does mean is emptying the dishwasher is one of those weird jobs, isn't it? It's hours after the event, so I'll see it's finished. I think, well, I'll open the door, pull the drawer out, and then, to be fair, she'll often come back down from bed then because she can hear me screaming. She said, what's the matter, John? Is it the spider? I said, it's not the spider, it's the dishwasher. She says, you're joking. I say, no, get comfortable while we go through it all. <laughs> then we'll go through the litany of crimes that's happened in here because, like so many people, she seems to believe this is a magic box that cleans anything roughly in its vicinity, on the worktop, in the living room. If you love your family, you load this with the attention of a psychopath. Everything has its place. I say, well, it's this bowl that caught my attention, first of all. This upturned bowl here on the top shelf. Now, it's not wrong to put a bowl on the top shelf on a light load, on a light load, on a light load, on a light load. <laughs> Malfunctioned a bit there, I am sorry. <laughs> we tend to put the bowls down here, do you see, on the bottom shelf where the rungs are a bit wider. Now, that tips the bowls forward. You get more purchase underneath to get that filth off. But what you've done here is perfectly acceptable on a light load. <laughs> I just noticed you've put this upturned bowl on top of an upturned plate. <laughs> <laughs> really had to ask how you thought that was ever going to get clean in there. <laughs> you've created a hermetically sealed environment here, look. There's, there's nowhere for the water to get. There's only water in that box. Little people don't come in the back and lift everything. Give us hand with this one, bloody hell. Pick it up, I say, look, that's exactly the same as when it went in, that one. <laughs> Except now it's warm and damp and a day old. Did you see how dangerous that is? You couldn't grow mould in a more efficient environment than that. <laughs> well, put that one there, that'll have to be done again. Let's start a little pile. <laughs> now, this plate will have to be done again. I know the underside is clean that we eat off, but this side's filthy, and of course, when we stack it, that's gonna touch the eating side of the one underneath, isn't it? So we'll do that one again. Now, this wine glass on its side, oh, I'm sorry? Oh, we're both tired. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think this is a hobby of mine at three o'clock in the morning, dear. <laughs> this wine glass on its side, that'll have to be done again by hand as per the note. <laughs> um, don't know if you're getting my emails, you never reply. Push the drawer down. Now, if you'll come downstairs with me, you see we've fallen foul of the old two-spoon rule there, haven't we? That's two spoons in the same command. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does look like one spoon. It does look like one spoon. <laughs> and that's the problem, you see. They've tessellated together. That's why we call it spooning, you see. They've gone together. <laughs> Looks like one lovely clean spoon, doesn't it? But if I just fan them out, look, you see, it's the front and back of two filthy spoons, isn't it? <laughs> the state of that, all covered in yoghurt and grass. You've been to the park again, haven't you? <laughs> Now, this is where I've had to fail you. Um, <laughs> this is your major fault. This is uh, the bread knife in the, in the cutlery tray there. Now, of course, it's called a knife. I can see why you've put it in there, but if you'll come down with me, it's not actually a semantic issue, it's an issue of height. Um, <laughs> bread knife's too tall to go underneath, isn't he, Mr. Bread Knife? Yeah, he's too tall there, and he's stopped the propeller going round there, hasn't he? So, <laughs> what's happened there? You've shut the door, the propeller has smashed into the bread knife, and in fairness, spent 108 minutes washing the shit out of all this. <laughs> Everything on this axis is absolutely impeccable. I can't fault you on that. Sadly, it's just all the rest of it has been a complete waste of both. I wonder when she left. I didn't hear the door. <laughs> and I think that's what I want. And I do. There are things that happen, little things that really excite me that probably shouldn't. Uh, for example, for this to function, you just need to understand, if you eat a packed lunch near me... I am watching you. <laughs> I am watching you like a hawk, right? And not because I don't like you. Anyone who makes a packed lunch is a good human being. You will be amongst the last to die when I take over. <laughs> the, the humans that make packed lunches are incredible. Because you wake up like the rest of us, you're hungover, you're tired, you feel sick. We hit snooze, you go and make sandwiches. <laughs> First thing in the morning when the last thing you want to think about is ham and egg <laughs> and corned beef. But you go and you go, oh, it'll be worth it at lunchtime. And you cut them into a little shape so they fit neatly into your little box. And then you build everything else around it so your apple doesn't bang into your banana. And then you put a little chocolate biscuit in there, don't you, right at the end. But you pretend all morning that you haven't, so it's a surprise when you find it. <laughs>
Remarkable people. Yeah, I'm going to have my lunch. I've forgotten my chocolate biscuit again. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh. There's a mint club in there. Oh, I forgot I'd put it in there. Keith, you legend. You're remarkable people, right? So if I watch someone eat a pat lunch, it's like watching a child unwrap a stocking. Just total joy. It doesn't matter who you are. It could be Obama having his pat lunch. You look like a five-year-old. Just, I hope I've got a yogurt. <laughs> so I was on a train uh, going into London. Uh, I'm stood in the sort of cubicle bit, and I watch a guy opposite me unload a pat lunch onto his lap. And I'm like, here we fucking go. <laughs> this is already the best thing that's going to happen to me today. <laughs> you better finish this before my stop, because otherwise I'm not getting off. <laughs> This is the reality we're confronting. I look around and no one else has clocked this. I'm like, well, this is my little private show then. It's like a lap dance now. It's just me and him and his lunch. I'm like, oh, yeah, do it, baby. He lifts his lid off like that. First thing he gets out is a baguette, right? Smoked salmon and cream cheese. It wouldn't have been my choice, but I let him carry on. He puts the box to the side. I already like him when he's made his packed lunch. Bear this in mind. I fall a little bit in love with him when he unwraps it and I can see that that cling film has been cut with scissors. <laughs> this is a professional we're dealing with here. It's not all stretched and torn like, oh, you bastard, it's snibbity, snibbity, snibbity. Baldy, <laughs> baldy, see you at lunchtime. <laughs> right, he's going to know how to eat this baguette, and he really did. He nailed it. He ate the end bits first. Obviously too crusty, aren't they? You're not going to end on that. He works his way into the middle, the perfect middle inch. That's where he worked out from when he was creating this masterpiece. That's what he wants at the end. And he didn't eat one end and then the other. Constant pivot. <laughs> Got to that little middle inch, popped it in his mouth. Thought, oh, that is perfect. This is a pro. And still no one's watching. I'm like, you dicks. <laughs> he then, he reaches and he grabs an apple. And I'm a bit disappointed, because when you watch the best, you want to see them take on something. I want to see him eat, like, a meringue or something. <laughs> How are you going to do this, chief? Like an apple, you just say, oh, get on with it, dickhead. Just grabbed it like that, so the stalk's coming out of the top. He picks the stalk off, throws it in his lunchbox, and then he does this. Ow! <laughs> Big old bite out of the very top of the apple. And I audibly yelped at that point. <laughs> You can't eat the lid of an apple. <laughs> we all know, an apple has a lid and a base. You clutch that, you consume around the apple. These are facts. You can't eat the lid, this tip, right? I know what's happened, he's holding it, he's thinking, I really want my apple, but I'm not holding it, right? He's like, ah, ah. Oh, fucking ruined it now, and I? I'm gonna get a sticky finger when I try and hold this properly now. Well, at least I hope no one noticed. And I just wanna look at him and go, yeah, I saw you. You let me down, big guy, right? And I'm waiting for him to... He doesn't look up at all. He just goes like this. Ow! Another bite. And then I think, hang on, that wasn't a mistake. This is how he eats a fucking apple. <laughs> From top to bottom. <laughs> now my mind is melting instantly. You can't tell me there's new ways of eating fruit. <laughs> now if someone gets on a train with a banana, I'm like, well, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> They'd probably just shove it in his earlobe or something. <laughs> just sit on a melon and ingest it somehow. <laughs> I'm watching him, and you, you see him eat the lid, you think, well, he's going to eat the core, isn't he? Now, am I supposed to interject here, because he's going to turn into a treat? <laughs> I don't want to watch a man die while he's having his lunch. <laughs> you can't jump in, can you? Go, no! <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. Did you not see the tree in carriage B? Honestly. So there is a warning to all of us, that is. He eats right through the core. Now, I'm not showing off. I have seen someone eat the core of an apple before. I've travelled. Uh, there's a friend of mine at primary school. Uh, it was a cry for help. He used to eat other people's. You'd eat your apple, you'd give him it, he'd go... <coughs> He's a tree now. <laughs> Richmond Park, he's doing all right for himself. Uh, he eats right through the core of this apple, and I think, well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I have never seen anyone in my life eat the little anus bit. <laughs> at the bottom of it. You know the little wizened tarantula's ring piece? <laughs> Right, they're, they're, even on your own apple, you don't look at it, do you? It's disgusting. Like, oh, lovely apple. Ugh. <laughs> Why did I look at that? I can't eat that now. It looks so much like an anus. If you squeezed an apple and shit came out, you wouldn't even be surprised, would you? <laughs> you just think, well, what did I think was going to happen when I squeezed the apple? Of course it's going to have a shit out of its anus. I'm rude to watch. <laughs> he gets down to the anus, and it's really like, you know, sometimes you hear a skid, and you think, oh, I'm going to see a car crash. 
And then you think, ah, oh, I don't want to see a car crash. And then you think, oh, I don't want to miss a car crash. <laughs> it's that. I don't want to watch him eat this anus, because he's going to put it in his mouth. I'll feel it on my tongue, all dry, and uh, get it off my anus. <laughs> but I can't look away, can I? Because you can't ask anyone else. Excuse me, did you see if that man ate his anus? <laughs> I'm just going to pull this red handle here. And... <laughs> And we're going to find out who should be with you. All right. I have to, and he gets right down to the anus, right? And he's got the whole anus in his hand, like the song. He sort of moves to a pinch. He's really got hold of this thing now, and I'm sickened by him now. It's Master Chef all over again. I fucking hate you. I'm going to grab that escape hammer. You're not getting off this train now. Can't let you breed. <laughs> I'll eat the anus, sure, but don't end with it. It's as if he's saying, yeah, I don't mind the flesh, but I just get that so I can have the anus at the end. <laughs> And he nibbles all round, so there's no flesh left on it. It's just the anus. And I'm physically trying to hold down sick now. <laughs> Puts it in that hand. He retrieves the cling film from his sandwich, unfolds it, pops the anus in the middle, folds it twice more, and I would say my heart ejaculated over everyone in the house. <laughs>